For those that have been watching the uh, video series, you guys noticed that the uh, on-off switch here was defective in my initial test all the way up to uh, one meg or greater in DC resistance across the uh, switch itself. You can see I'm removing all the uh, contact points here back over to the uh, volume control or potentiometer. And I'll do the same here for the on-off switch. You can also see the uh, bias cell holder at least was in place and I told you I would reconfigure this so someone's already done that we'll take a look at the uh, design before and after and you can see the bias resistor here north of uh, 5 meg has been added so I'll try to expand on that and uh, show you the circuit change that someone has already made at some point in time during the uh, life of the receiver. So I'm going to go ahead and finish getting the uh, switch out and uh, see if we can uh, actually make a repair. If not, look for a uh, replacement. Thanks for following along. It was a simple process to get the uh, on-off switch out of the circuit and the uh, volume control. Give this thing a turn here. Yep, and it's still acting up. It's really stiff as well. There seems to be a lot of resistance here in turning the uh, control stem. Let me look at this just a little bit closer. I might be in luck here and not have to uh, pop this open. It appears I have access to the uh, switch in three different locations here, here, and here. So let me spray some contact cleaner in those areas, work the switch around, see if that makes any difference in the uh, performance of the uh, switch. If not, then uh, we'll take this thing apart. I just use some general electronic cleaner for now. It definitely uh, freed up and reduced some of the uh, friction or torque here on the uh, control stem. you can see our problem still exists. Let me grab a different cleaner and apply it and see if it makes any difference. So guys, it looks like we're successful just cleaning the uh, switch from the uh, rear. Let me uh, check the uh, volume control across its range as well. I flooded this thing numerous times with uh, contact cleaner and you can see here we're times 10 so just north of uh, 500k is called out on the schematic that's what I was reading on the digital meter as well let me uh, switch the lead now run it through its rotation And it seems to be tracking uh, smoothly. Let's go to the other side. Okay, I think we're good there. Of course, I'll check this again before I uh, put it back in the uh, chassis. Let's get back over to the uh, Type 75. Look at that bias cell. That is the uh, reconfiguration that someone made to the circuit to accommodate the uh, missing bias cell for the Type 75 tube. And you guys can see what I used to clean the on-off switch and the uh, volume control. That is the uh, potentiometer started out just with the uh, QD electronic cleaner. About uh, four or five applications there. Then I moved over to the uh, super contact cleaner from uh, MG Chemicals. That seemed to uh, solidify the uh, repair and do the best job. As I noted earlier, when I remove the on-off switch and the volume control, looking closer at the circuit, I can see it's already been modified. 
to work around or rebias the Type 75 tube itself. Again, the bias cell, mainly Mallory, one of the big producers. A no current potential of the cell was around 1 volt plus or minus 10%. Of course, back then they were looking for these things to uh, last for the life of the radio. So most of the research, even two and a half, three years after the cell was installed, they were still working uh, as designed. And you'll see the modification that someone made to bypass the cell. Again, this is uh, configured as a grid leak bias. You can see R1 and C1 was added here. R1 being a value between 5 meg and 10 meg. And some research by a lab back in the 30s. There's a great article in Radiotronics number 94, page 3. I'll put a link in the video description. But you'll see where they did some testing on a 1 meg 5 meg, 10 meg, and even a 20 meg resistor for R1. And 10 meg provided the best results for the bias and provided the least amount of distortion that we would pass along to the next audio stage. They compared that again against the uh, cathode bias where a resistor would be used and the ground lifted off the cathode and a capacitor, an electrolytic, uh, placed in parallel with that resistor. Again, better results using this method and procedure. So again, check out the uh, article. It goes into uh, detail about the uh, testing. I think you'll find it very informative. Again, I'll uh, modify this. You can see I'm just above uh, 6 meg. For this resistor, I think I've got a 10 meg. I'll just go ahead and place that in there. And uh, we'll check the uh, bias voltage when we get to that uh, part of the restoration. Appreciate you guys watching. Hope everyone has a, a wonderful weekend. Take care.